but Charlie Skelton, award-winning journalist for the London Guardian, wrote this story yesterday. At the G7, we journalists were pampered at Bilderberg, were harassed by police, and last night uh, they got raided. They came into their lodge hotel room, rousted everyone. Uh, this is unprecedented. They know exactly who Skelton is. They escorted him off the mountaintop uh, when he first arrived two days ago with a police escort in front and back of his car, even though he had a reservation up the mountain. He got back up to his reservation. Uh, again, TheGuardian.com, Charlie Skelton joins us to talk about this situation. We now have a bright green armored vehicle showing up to menace 10 journalists. Uh, we have just squadrons of police stomping around and getting in everyone's face. Uh, Charlie has been detained in, 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 in other countries. He's been stalked, harassed, like the late, great Jim Tucker has been. They tend to really target Skelton because The Guardian is undoubtedly the number one paper in the U.K. And from talking to family that lives in Germany and talking to, to folks that go to Europe a lot, I've been to Europe, but uh, not that much, The Guardian is the... English-speaking paper, and people all speak English in Europe or try to, to communicate. And so it's kind of the international language. So it's the biggest paper probably in Europe itself. And so this is like them going after a New York Times reporter in New York City. It's very bold. It's very aggressive. It's very dangerous because if they can go after Charlie Skelton, folks, they can go after anybody. And so we either hang together or hang separate. He's a mild-mannered fellow as well. Uh, he's a comedy writer, journalist, and actor uh, from Suffolk, England, an Oxford University graduate. He started as a journalist writing features for the Evening Standard and The Guardian. Uh, he began reporting uh, on the Bilderberg Group uh, many years ago, and at first kind of thought it was a joke. Very soon, didn't think it was. Uh, and uh, so he joins us now. He works with his wife as well, uh, getting out some of the hardest reporting out there. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on, sir. Thank you. Can I just compliment you on your amazing-looking studio? Well, thank you. You know, uh, so so the, the Guardian coverage has gone to the front of the paper website. It's in the physical paper. This has got to really upset the Bilderberg Group. Tell us what happened to you and why you think they're so bold. Well, I think it's possibly because the juxtaposition of the G7 and, and Bilderberg this year has meant that there's the, the, the policing here is on an extremely heavy scale. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of it. It feels to me as heavy as it was back in 2009 in Greece. And, not, um, and you know, it's not as bad as that, uh, but it's still, there's still a big police presence. And yeah, I, I think it has something to do with the giant, gigantic security operation that was the G7. And, and uh, for folks that don't know, the G7 just ended, and this is basically a continuation of that. Yeah, it was only, it was, it, it finished like a couple of days before and about 20 miles away, just across the border in Germany. But, you know, it, it, the experience of being a journalist in the two places could not be more extreme. I mean, there we were pampered and, and, uh, and primped and helped out in every way imaginable by the, by the government. Uh, and here, you know, we're, we're impeded and, and hindered and, and harassed by the government. And it's, a very, it's very strange to have gone one from the other. It's like getting out of a, of a hot bath and jumping into an ice bath. You know, it's, it's quite a shock. Why do you think it's so different, A, and then B, I mean, I know you got the classic British gentlemanly demeanor when stuff happens to Watson, never wants to talk about it, but you got raided last night, so let's, let, I mean, let's talk about what happened to you. Well, it, it I had ended up with three uh, policemen in my, in my hotel room, and, but they were checking, a, checking my identification. Now, this, bear in mind, my identification had been checked twice at two separate police checkpoints about 15 minutes before, no more than that. So I, I was an extremely checked and identified person at this point, but it wasn't good enough. So uh, these three policemen and they, you know, fluorescent bibs and their sidearms decided to stand over me for, for, it must've been about a quarter of an hour. This is at one in the morning, right? In my hotel room. I got so bored and I was so annoyed. I wanted to say something, but I, I didn't want to be aggressive. So I just took my trousers and shirt off and stripped down to my pants and said, I'm taking a shower. And uh, went and got into the shower, had a shower, came out in my towel, and they were still in my room, still checking me out, possibly checking me out in my towel, I don't know. But um, so I, they said, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Skelton, you've got to put your clothes on and come to your car. So 
I put my clothes on and the uh, the interview continued out at the car where they, they searched the car. I don't know quite what they were expecting me to have put in the car somewhere after the... And they know full jokes. well you're writing cover stories for the biggest newspaper in Europe and they're acting like I, this. Well, I did say to them, look, I mean, I know this is annoying for me, but at least you're giving me something to write about. So, I mean, I... And also, I was out there for so long that I, I decided to just t start talking to them about, about Bilderberg. And I just said, look, I know you're treating me like a criminal right now, but there are actual criminals uh, up in the hotel. You, you, you happen to be pointing the wrong way, you guys. You know, there, there are convicted felons uh, up in, in the Bilderberg. Kissinger, conference. Petraeus, the list goes on and on. Yeah, and there's, a, there's an, Aust an Austrian guy as well who's just been handed out a... Uh, Rene Benko, he's just been handed out a, um, a one-year suspended sentence for for bribery. You know, so uh, there's, and they they knew him, and they so they were aware of that. And they started looking a bit embarrassed at that point. And then I just started talking about HSBC. H there's a lot of HSBC there this year, and and they've literally just a few days ago had to pay 28 million pounds to the Swiss banking authorities for money laundering. And that's just um, right over the mountains in Switzerland. That's going on. Yeah, and in fact, if you look at the list of participants, you'll see that there's a member of the a very senior banking Swiss banking official uh, from Geneva is is also uh, one of the attendees. So we've got the people really, basically over the regulations of banking. They're meeting yeah. with the HSBC people. I mean, this yeah. is th this isn't a conflict of interest. Yeah, not just that. It's the HSBC's chief legal officer is there, as well as the group chairman and the British. Um, for, uh, the British Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne. Who's over banking. Be, yeah, exactly. So it couldn't be a more s sort of sick little cluster going on for three days in, in private, in absolute private. This so, yeah. is not your granddaddy's smoky room, as our reporter Jakari Jackson put it. I mean, this is this looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Uh, if folks have seen Dune, the movie with the spaceships on the landing field, the, 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 the hotel looks like some bizarre science fiction spaceship that's landed and it's there in the middle of the Alps. It's just a bizarre scene. It, is, it does look like it's about to sort of retract its, its, its wheels and take off into the skies. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a strange place. And this, you know, when you think about the amount of money being spent by the state on, pol on policing this and on, on essentially stopping reporting happening, uh, and uh, things like the, there's a, there's a, I know you've reported on one, one radar mast. I know there's also a military radar station, which we found out about a couple of months ago, just just again down from the hotel. So there's there's a lot of military here. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of state police, but all of this money they're putting into it, all of that money they just can't find uh, a line in their budget for a press centre and some proper accreditation. Uh, uh, like the G7 does, you know? Well, I mean, what about England? I mean, the police were so nice. We had 3,500 yeah. people there. Uh, you helped put on the whole event. It was a huge success. We exposed it. The media said, yeah, it's a criminal lobbying group. Uh, I mean, what's the difference between the UK police, who aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, compared to the Austrian police? Well, clearly the decision had been made in, in the UK, and I, and I think also in um, Denmark the year after, to to liaise with um, the press and with protesters and to enable their actions. So in both cases of Copenhagen and Watford, we were, we were given a hand by, you know, I'm, I'm not being an apologist for, for, for when the police do bad things, of course, but in those two instances, it did seem like the police were working to help us both cover the um, conferences. Well, and I had the police the tell process. me, I had the state, federal and locals all tell me they don't like Bilderberg. Absolutely. I mean, I remember hearing that in um, in Citrus in 2010, the, the head of the police. Some, some people were arrested up crawling through the bushes, taken to the head of the police, and he just went, yeah, look, I'm with you guys. So, I mean, you, you get a lot of sympathy from people, but, you know, the, the, the Bavarian police aren't seeming to be the most sympathetic at the moment. Yeah, Maybe no, it's the, famous, it's the famous cliche, and it's a cliche because it's true. A uh, certain percentage of the Germanic folks love authority, and all they know is it's the big evil hotel with the big wigs there, and they're going to grovel to it. We'll be back. Stay there. I, I, I want to learn what you think's on the agenda that we haven't learned yet, who may be on the list uh, and not on the list. Charlie Skelton from The Guardian rated at 1 a.m., drug out in his underwear, and he's calmly taking it. So report, uh, Charlie, you know, they come into your place. They take you back out to the car. 
Uh, I mean, this is really outrageous in a Western country. It's what I expect to hear from, from a third world uh, nation. Uh, I mean, I know you don't like to draw attention to yourself, but I think journalists should rally to your aid and others' aid because we've really seen an attack on journalists the last few years across the Western world that's unprecedented. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, um, the, the, the way to do it, I think, is to try and push, for, in this instance, to push for press accreditation and for a press center and to, to, to build relationships. Because the more you can build relationships, the, the, the less exposed you feel. And I, and I guess that also re applies to relationships between journalists. But, you know, there's, there's precious little journalism going on when you, in, in the mainstream media. When you look at what, ha what went on in the G7, where there, there was this kind of prepackaged stuff being fed out from the, the government, all this pooled footage and, and photos being kind of regurgitated and, and chewed over. Um, and, and, and it didn't strike me that that was particularly real journalism, whereas, you know, seeing your guys out there and climbing up a mountain and, and taking photos of radar masts and, and that kind of thing, that's actually, you know, it's not easy to do. And I, I, think, I don't think journalism should be that easy. That's a good point. Modern so-called journalists just sit there, get a government or corporate press release, republish yep. it and put their name on it. It's all press releases. I mean, the whole of the G7 was a huge press release. Uh, and, and, and a kind of, it was to be inside it and to be in that within the press center, this giant thing held in an ice skating center was, it was very surreal at times. And it was surreal because everyone was taking it seriously. It was like they were looking at photos of a pantomime. Uh, and, and Goldilocks was up on the screen and, and, they, was, and they were all going, oh my God, Goldilocks looks like, looks like she's in trouble. You know, it was like that kind of seriousness of the whole thing. And that's what was, it was like cognitive dissonance, I felt. When I, sure, when I what do you make of the armored vehicle uh, rolling up to you and, and nine other journalists like you were terrorist? Well, it's kind of bizarre. I mean, it's part, I suppose, of the general militarization of police. I suppose there's so much of this equipment that's just finding its way and trickling back into the domestic police forces, which is a bit grim. And I guess in America, you have a lot more of that. Every every town has one store and a, and a tank. But um, uh, it's kind of weird, and, and, and it's just such overkill. I mean, it's so unnecessary. In fact, the, the policing and the checkpoints are so heavy that there's, there's precious little few people out here, you know, standing even by the gates. It's, it's, it's very small this year, you know, and, and I, have, I have seen one... Um, mainstream journalist which is good but unfortunately she was in a mercedes being driven up to the hotel she she's the editor of a norwegian newspaper so um so yeah i guess i've seen one one mainstream journalist so that's good that's a start and they're inside and promise not to talk in closing we know some of their agenda uh what do you think this year's bilderberg's really all about and how, how would you summarize other key points as a journalist that uh, you're witnessing well from the agenda, obviously, the AI leaps out and um, with Google DeepMind and this, the, 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 um, the general shift of Bilderberg towards high tech and towards that, that, those spheres, you know, with their, people like Peter Thiel from Facebook and Alex Karp from Palantir and Schmidt from Google, etc., and Mundy from Microsoft. These are big players in the tech field and, and to, it's very interesting to see their, their presence and their power is growing within Bilderberg. So that's interesting and I guess also Greece is a, is a big thing. And you've got a member of the executive board of the European Central Bank You've got two European finance ministers, three European prime ministers. They're going to be talking about, about Greece and the Grexit. Um, and they're going to be talking about it with all these predators, like people like Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and Morgan Stanley and, and Lazard and HSBC, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. But, you know, not a single Greek-serving politician will be there. So, you know, if I was the, the, you know, the finance minister, Yanis, of, uh, of Greece, I'd be wanting to come here now. It can't make them happy that the UK wants to get a vote on staying in the EU, something that never got to be put in the EU before. I notice they've got some of the media people there as well that are big on keeping the UK in the EU. I noticed some of those folks got invited into Bilderberg, and we know that it ties into TPP as well. Absolutely. Well, everything does. At the moment, yeah, everything ties into the big trade agreements. Um, and you, you, there's some key lobbyists for that here at, at Bilderberg, you know, the very, at the very top level. And you could you could almost describe the whole meeting as a as a lobbying uh, sure. opportunity for, for these trade groups. Why meetings. do you think they're targeting you so much? Because my reporters said it days ago when you first got there that they were seem to be targeting you, and, and I don't think there's any doubt of that now. Well, I'm I'm just flattered to get the any kind of attention. I suppose once a year I get uh, you know I get I get up to my underwear and chat to a policeman, and that's nice. And uh, I should point out by the way that I stripped. I wasn't stripped. 
I was. That no, was I my, understand, um, but you're in your place, yeah, yeah. and then they take you back outside. I, I yeah, was yeah. being a bit sarcastic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do next, or, or, or maybe you can't say. Next now. Yes. Uh, I, I just just carry on trying to report. I, you know, it's all you can do. All you can do is turn up and and do your best to 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 report on events. I mean, well, it's very simple. We're talking to a rare man, a, a, a real journalist who works for a major media outlet, Charlie Skelton from The Guardian. Thank you so much. We'll cover your uh, action here every day. Thank you. We're